Hello, my name is Paul Wells. It's January 1966, and the song is Simon and Garfunkel, Sound of Silence. So that's in E flat minor. First of all, I'd like to point out what a wonderful name, Garfunkel. How cool to have a name which is built around the word funk. Um, this song is a simple loop that plays round a few times, but there's a crescendo to it. It gets gradually louder. It's Originally performed two voices and acoustic guitar, so it doesn't get that loud. Um, but, yeah. What I would point out is that we have something which is important for playing piano, which is... Um, okay, let me explain. Normally what happens is I will use these fingers to play the tune and... I will use my other fingers in my right hand and my left hand to play what I call the accompaniment. And they live different lives, they follow different rhythms. But for this song, in order to get the effect of two voices, um, I'm playing with these fingers in thirds. So simply by playing in thirds, that, I believe, pulls out quite a lot of the character of this song. Another feature which it has is the use of ninths. So that's a ninth. And then the chord changes. And we also have a, a ninth between the E-flat and the F. And it also carries on up here, so we have a ninth. And as I've said in previous videos, all you need is one tiny little feature of character, one unique point like that, and you've got yourself a song. You've got yourself something which is distinct, distinguished. Another thing, try counting, try playing just the melody and actually counting the time signature out loud. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. It's actually pretty difficult. And it shows that they've done, I think Paul Simon wrote the song, he's done very, very clever things. So he's doing his best to ignore the usual four beats of the bar which lock a song down. Yes, there are four beats in the bar there, but he's doing his best to distort and digress from that as much as possible. In some places it feels to me like it flips to a three beats in one bar followed by five beats in the other bar. Um, it's difficult to pin that down, but that's the sort of effect, putting the emphasis on the fourth beat of the bar, for example. All very powerful effects, all drawing a lot of attention to the song. So, this series started in 1960. We're now in 1966. I think things are really hotting up. 1966 was a world of very rich weaving harmonies, 
twisting melodies and liberating rhythms. And I think this song is an example, as good an example of that, that you're going to find. That's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Most important thing about music is what it sounds like.